Hi everyone, now if you don't already know what iFlix is, you should probably watch my previous video where I go into a lot of detail about what it is, how it works and the kind of content they have. Now just as a quick overview, it's very similar to Netflix except it's aimed specifically at the Philippine market and it has servers nearby so that when you try and stream content it's nice and smooth, it's nice and fast. So it's really a good service and it's actually pretty cheap. Now iFlix recently updated their iPhone and Android apps to support Google Chromecast. Now if you don't know what Google Chromecast is, it basically lets you um, send content from your phone to the TV and it's all wireless so there's no cables to plug in, to run around, you know, no hassle, basically it's just wireless. And iFlix were kind enough to send over a Google Chromecast so that I can test it out with their iFlix service. So thank you to Trisha over at iFlix for that. Now I've already opened this obviously because I'm using it for this, um, but I liked the ribbon so I figured I'd leave it on. Um, now for anyone who hasn't seen the Chromecast before, this is the box it comes in. Uh, it does come with, this is where it sat originally, it does come with this power supply, but the chances are uh, your TV might already have a USB port, so you might be able to just power it straight from the TV USB port, which is what I'm doing. So I'm going to turn the TV around and show you exactly how it works. Now bear in mind that this is not a review of the Chromecast. I'll probably do a separate video showing this and you know giving you more details about that. This is more about the fact that iFlix now supports streaming to the Chromecast and it could potentially be one of the best and fastest ways to get iFlix on the big TV. So this is the brains right here. It's basically a mini computer that fits into this tiny little package. It plugs into your HDMI port, obviously, and on the end is where you'll find the connector for your micro USB cable to power it. Now they do give you a really long USB cable, and the reason for that is in case you want to use the supplied power adapter. For instance, if your TV doesn't have a USB port, or if the USB port cannot supply enough power. Now in my case, it's supplying enough power, so I'm just plugging it straight into the TV. So the first thing I do is plug the USB cable into the TV. Next thing I'm gonna do is use the little HDMI extension because this one's a little bit too bulky to fit into my slot. This is included with the Chromecast. And then I'm just gonna plug the power into the Chromecast, which is the USB cable. And there we go, we're set up and ready to start streaming iFlix again. It will take a minute or two for the Chromecast to boot up. Now for anyone wondering how much the Chromecast costs and where you can buy it, the price really varies between sellers. Um, locally I've seen it for anywhere from 2,000 peso to 2,500 peso. And I've seen it on sale in a lot of places. Um, Mega Mall, for instance, there's a lot of shops in there that are selling it. Uh, OLX, which used to be Sulit. Um, Lazada, so there's many places where you can buy a Chromecast from. So you're looking at anywhere between 2000 to 2500 for the Chromecast. And you know, you can use it for more things than just iFlix, but for the purpose of this, obviously, I'm just going to speak about iFlix. And of course, you will need a wireless home network, a Wi Fi network for the Chromecast to connect to and for your gadget to connect to, whether it's a iOS device like an iPhone, iPad, or an Android tablet or an Android phone. Now, like I said, this isn't just for iPhones and Apple devices, it's also for Android devices. So this is the Samsung Galaxy S4. I'm running iFlix and I'm going to open Mission Impossible 3. And then I'm going to click play. Oops, click play. And then it should start streaming on the TV. So you can see it's loading. and now it's playing on the TV. And I can control it here from my phone. So if I want to skip ahead, there you go, it's playing. If I want to pause it, I can pause it. Uh, and now I want to show you something pretty cool. Let me open another piece of content. So let's say I want to watch this movie. I click play. It tells the Chromecast, hey, start streaming this from iFlix. Now it's not your phone downloading it and then sending it to the Chromecast. The Chromecast is actually connecting directly to iFlix and streaming it. So what that means is that if I skip ahead here, for example, it's playing. And then even if I turn this phone off, so power off, you can see the phone is now shutting down but the movie continues to play. So you're not reliant on the device. Once a device has told the Chromecast, hey, start streaming this, that's it. You can now get rid of this and you can watch. Um, so you can see, got volume. 
and no problem. Simple, right? And I know what you're thinking. Okay, you've turned your phone off. How are you going to pause it and go and get more popcorn? Well, the TV remote. This won't work for every TV, but uh, this is a really clever feature. It's called HDMI CEC, and basically it sends commands over the HDMI to the Chromecast from your TV. So if I click play on my TV remote, the movie starts playing. If I click pause, the movie pauses. <laughs> That's pretty cool, right? Now, unfortunately, the other buttons like fast forward, um, they don't do anything at the moment and rewind. That's not a problem with iFlix, that's specific to the Google Chromecast. But from what I've read, they are working on getting those extra buttons working. And it's not specific to a certain brand of TV. This is actually built into the HDMI protocol. So it should work with most TVs that already have these multimedia buttons at the bottom. Now it doesn't have to be a mobile device, you can also use your laptop. Just open iFlix in Chrome and then navigate to whatever you want to watch and basically you're casting whatever's on the laptop is being mirrored onto the TV. So I can click play here, push this out of the way, oops, if I click on resume, push this out of the way and then I can start watching on the TV. Um, just uh, not today, because today Julie's coming home and uh, you know, I'm going to get her something. So yeah, you do have the option of using a laptop or a computer, uh, so you don't have to use a mobile device. And more good news for people, uh, iFlix are working on improving their billing to make it you know, a little bit smoother and to have some more options. And because of that, they're actually offering people a 30 day free trial at the moment instead of the 14 day free trial. Not only that, but you don't have to go through SMS verification. All you have to do is put in an email address and password and boom, you've got 30 days of free access to iFlix. So that's pretty cool. So if you're watching, jump on that now because that could go back to the 14 days at any point. So jump on it now, get your free 30 days. You don't have to give them any details, but an email address and a password that you want to use. Now, I've been using this for a while now, and it really works perfectly. Um, I haven't had any stutters or anything like that. It works just as well as it does on the phone. And that's what I like about iFlix. They're really like on the cutting edge of technology. Unlike some of the other companies like Blink, I reviewed them, their software was absolutely awful. And there is another service which I recently looked at here in the Philippines and I'm not going to name it because I'm not planning to review them because it doesn't even deserve to be reviewed but they were still relying on ActiveX. <laughs> so, I mean, come on. And if you watched my previous video, you'll know that the Chromecast is not the only way to get iFlix on the big screen. You have other options like plugging in cables, which is kind of a hassle, and even those cables are pretty expensive, um, at least for Apple devices, a bit cheaper for the Android devices because you can get generic ones quite commonly. Um, another option for the Android devices is the Kindle Fire TV. Um, is it the Kindle Fire TV or just Fire TV? Anyway, the Amazon Fire TV, whether you get the box or the TV stick, you can marry your Android device to the big screen and that works okay, but I guess the Chromecast has the benefit that if you have a family where one person has Apple and another person has Android, both of them can work with the Chromecast. So, you know, the Chromecast is good in that way that it supports both. So there's not much else to say, to be honest, because it just works, and that's the way things should be. Um, the thing is, a lot of people like iFlix and they enjoy watching it on their computer, on their cell phone, but the TV, that's where it's at, because people want to sit back and, you know, they want to relax as a family and watch it on the big screen. And people were saying on their Facebook, you know, add AirPlay, add Chromecast support, add this, add this, add this, we want to watch it on the big TV. And, you know, it didn't take that long until they've added Chromecast support. I think they haven't yet added Apple AirPlay, um, but, you know, hopefully they'll be just as quick on that as they have on the Chromecast support. Now, if you're wondering why I haven't been playing a lot of content while I'm speaking, uh, of course, there's copyright issues, so I don't want to play too much content and then have YouTube complain at me saying, hey, you don't have permission to run, you know, 10 minutes of Conan O'Brien or whatever. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section below and please remember to subscribe for future videos. And like I said, jump on that iFlix promo, 30 days of free access just by entering an email address. There's no reason not to jump on that.